Is a cruise on your bucket list for next year? Have questions about a possible cruise or what's going to happen with the cruise lines next year? Stay with us as we look at the upcoming trends for 22 and 23 in the cruise industry. A lot of you have asked me about the outlook for travel and in particular cruising in 2022 and beyond. I know just the person to talk to. My guest today is Larry Jackson, co-owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. And together with his lovely wife, Linda, they have been providing cruise and cruise tours for satisfied customers since 2003. Larry and Linda have sold over 6,500 cruises and have personally escorted 90 plus cruises themselves. Hi, Larry. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Good morning, Ken. How are you? Good to see you this morning. Thank you. So, Larry, cruising is back, and more and more people are coming back to it each and every day. But I get the feeling there's still a lot of questions in people's minds out there about how things are going and what the outlook actually is for 2021 and 22. Now, I know you folks, and in particular yourself, Larry, you always have your ear to ear to the ground on any, anything cruise-related. So I thought for the benefit of our viewers and listeners that you could enlighten us a little bit on what you see coming down the line for 22 and perhaps 23. Yeah, I can. I'd be happy to. Um, first of all, we've been on five cruises since July, and they range from uh, the simulated cruises that we had to do uh, a two-day test. Uh, the CDC mandated uh, that we have. Uh, we, we did things like we, we pretended like there was an outbreak of COVID aboard the ship, and uh, we did all kinds of protocols and things like that to a six-star luxury cruise in Alaska to a river cruise on the Columbian Snake River. So we've kind of run the gamut, uh, including a seven-day cruise out of St. Martin because the cruise lines wouldn't cruise out of the United States because of the CDC. I think when we look out to 2022, the one thing that we have to consider is where we are in 2021. Okay. And right now we're we're under the CDC conditional sale order that rolled out in October 31st of um, basically 2020. And uh, it's a 45-page document that outlined what the cruise lines would have to do to resume cruising. And it, such things as what the mass policies would be, what the uh, uh, what the uh, vaccination policies would be, what the capacities would be, what the quarantine requirements, all those things are in this conditional sale order. Now, right now, that conditional sale order is, is set to expire on January 15th, 2022. Okay. However, we feel like that the cruise line and they've been doing this all along, will mate if the, well, we have three possibilities. One is the CDC extends the conditional sale order to another date in in 2022. That's probably the most likely. Two, they they let it expire, but the cruise lines just continue the protocols. Three, they they let it expire and the cruise lines go back to normal. And that's the least likely possibility. So I think what we have to do when we look at 2022 is assume that the, the, the conditional sale order protocols that we have in place now will probably continue. And I'm thinking at least through the first half of 2022. It's really up in the air. Uh, every time we get one of these variants pops up, it, I think it delays the um, the expiration of this conditional sale order because everybody's afraid that there's going to be a massive outbreak on a ship sure. and uh, they're going to get really bad publicity and everybody's going to stop cruising. But when we look at 2022, let me give you an example of the problems that we're facing right now. Uh, last week, the the um, breakaway sailed out of New Orleans um, on board where all the guests were vaccinated. All the guests received a COVID test within 20, within, I'm sorry, within 48 hours of embarking the ship. All of the crew members were vaccinated. The crew members were quarantined for 14 days before they got on the ship and they have not been allowed to leave the ship during the entire time that they've been on it. Most of that is four or five months that they haven't been able to leave the ship. With all of that in place, they had 17 COVID po- positive tests, 10 from the crew members and seven from the passengers. So uh, with with every precaution we could possibly take. Also, I would tell your listeners one of the protocols that we're, we have in place. Um, and that ship had less than a 50% capacity. So there's plenty of social distancing. They didn't wear masks, but they had an a, a HVAC HEPA uh, air conditioning system that was greatly improved to have 100% uh, air conditioning. So, I mean, everything we could possibly do, and we still had 17. So I, I think the lesson from there is we're not going to stop COVID no matter what we do. And uh, so that's going to impact what's going, what happens going forward. So Larry, just to interrupt you for just a second there. So did we had 17 positive cases on that ship. Uh, did it negatively impact 
the the crews the I, I gather the people were probably what what happened okay basically once you have a positive test according to the protocols you're quarantined uh <laughs> Well, I'm not quite the, – the rules keep changing because the CDC gives us waivers as we go along. But basically, you're quarantined in your cabin. The, the crew right. members were quarantined in a cabin, not in the crew quarters. Uh, when the ship got back, they uh, disembarked all those people, and uh, they were quarantined in their homes wherever they came from. But the next cruise, uh, they had all the same protocols in place, but this time they had to wear a mask on board the cruise where before they didn't have to. And also, uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines offered everybody a rebate if they did want to take the next cruise so the cruise okay. went out on the uh fifth went out four days ago and we haven't heard anything else about it so okay well it sounds to me like the, the cruise lines are doing everything they possibly can to live within this new world that we have yeah oh, oh and one other thing then all of the crew members were masked uh for the whole cruise right. also even though the passengers weren't so yeah i mean we have jumped through every hoop that you imaginable. And I, I read a statistic the other day. We've we've had six. Uh, this was as of the end of October. We'd had 600,000 people cruise. And we had 1,350 tests, positive tests out of that. So if you look at that percentage, it comes out to 0.00009%. So it's, it's, it's a very low probability. And almost all of these were breakthrough cases. So <laughs> when, when you ask me what 2022 is going to look like, uh, I mean, given the outlook, what we know right Right now is it's probably going to look like what we're doing right now. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and that is almost everybody on the ship is going to have to be vaccinated. Uh, we we started out the, this conditional sale order CSO says that you can have 95% of the guests vaccinated, 5% not. And that was done so that you could have children because right. at the time the vaccine was not cleared for children. Well, then the ports of call started putting in their own regulations. For instance, the Bahamas, they now require everybody on the ship that calls it Bahamas, including the private islands, to have 100% of the passengers vaccinated. So that's why I say you can pretty much count on uh, 100% of the passengers have to be vaccinated. Two vaccines, 14 days before they get on board. You can count on having to get a test that you're going to have to pay for, either an antigen or a PCR. Now, we th that's good news because before we had to have a PCR test, and they're very expensive to be able to get the results within the 48 hour time frame. Now they're allowing us to have the antigen test, which is a lot okay. less expensive and a lot faster results. So you can count on that's going to happen. I think pretty much you're going to count on a capacity of around 60%. I don't think we're going to go much above that until the CSO is, is rescinded. And by the way, this is a wonderful time to be cruising because I, I, we, we went on Silver Sea in Alaska. It's a 600 passenger ship. We had 300 passengers on board. Actually, it was about 250. And we had um, 600 crew members. So so we had two crew members for every passenger. And I tell people when, when you drop your napkin in the dining room, two people reach down to pick it up for you. So if you have any inkling of wanting to cruise, this is the time. To, I mean, the ports are called. There's nobody there. Uh, I was in Skagway, and I know you've been there in the summertime when you couldn't walk down the street because people were lining the streets wall to wall. I was the only person for seven blocks. And, uh, so if you can imagine what that looks like. So uh, I think it's a, just a wonderful time to be cruising. We're, we're the pricing is very, very good right now. When you look out, one one trend we're seeing for 2022, Ken, is it's because so many people have future cruise credits, they're booking suites, Right. junior suites, very upgraded cabins, but a lot of them have no intention of taking that cruise. They're just doing that to, as a placeholder. Now, when the cruise lines look at the bookings, they say, okay, well, we're booked up at 80%, so we're going to raise the prices. So you see high prices in 2022, but as you get into 2021, you watch those prices starting to fall, especially after final payment, because people don't really take the cruise. Oh, well, that's interesting. So what does that say to the people that are kind of looking for the last minute cruise deal? Is there such a thing now as a last minute cruise? Yeah, there is. And uh, especially for, uh, and I highly recommend celebrity cruise lines uh, because they have a policy called cru cruise with confidence, which allows you to cancel for a future cruise credit, not, not a refund, but for a future right. cruise credit up to 48 hours before the sailing. Not only that, if the price goes down and you've made the final payment up to 48 hours before the cruise, we've never had this before. For. Up until 48 hours before the cruise departs, they'll give you an onboard credit for whatever the price. I've had I had someone the other day. They got a $1,500 onboard credit because the price of the cruise had dropped that much, uh, and they were still three weeks away from sailing. So I th absolutely optimal time to be going on. Wow. So that begs the question though about about that. That that's a wonderful thing that celebrities doing, and I'm a, I've always been a big fan of celebrity. Yeah. Do you have to? 
is that something you have to monitor yourself or will celebrity celebrity automatically just do that for you? Yeah, no, you have to, you have to monitor it. And that's why you need to travel. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. that's another trend for 2022. Uh, you got to have a travel advisor. I mean, our whole times at celebrity right now are four and a half hours. Uh, and I, I had a fellow come in the other day. He'd booked $18,000 worth of cruises on Royal Caribbean, not with us and had future cruise credits for $18,000, but he lost the email for with the future cruise credit numbers on it. So he was out of luck. I mean, he he could not redeem those future cruise credits. Now we went to bat, we talked to the powers that be at Royal Caribbean, even though we didn't make the reservation and we got the future credit cruise credits for him. So that's just a small example of why you want to be working with a travel advisor. Now that that beg that begs another question that I had in mind. I, I was speaking with Royal Caribbean over the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And to their credit, the representative said we highly, highly, highly recommend in this day and age, if you're cruising, to use a travel advisor. Does that, are you finding that's going for most of the other cruise lines or? Uh, Royal has always been the most, uh, Royal has done phenomenal things. Uh, they have, uh, first of all, if you booked your cruise and you got a future cruise credit and you didn't book it with the agency that you want to be uh, working with, they'll transfer the, uh, if you give them the reservation number and say, I want to work with this agency to redeem my future cruise credits, Royal will transfer the, tra- the, um, the reservation to the agency. They never did that before. Uh, They have given us bonus commissions. They even gave us a loan uh, against our future commission. So Royal has been just phenomenal, helpful to to travel advisors. The other cruise lines, not so much. Uh, A lot of it's they give us lip service, but whether they actually deliver doesn't really uh, happen as much. Well, at the end, that's going to pay big dividends for the Royal Caribbean family of yeah, it's funny. Their their website is called Loyal to You. And that's that's really what we're. Uh, that's the way we're feeling. So, so they they've gone like through a terrible twenty months, at, along with along with every single travel advisor, travel agent out there, and there's been just an absolute ton of attrition in the travel agency business. You don't see it so much, uh, at least that I know of, uh, with cruise lines. But are they? How are? How do you feel that they're set financially going forward, Larry? Well, Ken, I think they're in good shape. Norwegian, I think last week, went back into the market for another billion dollars. Uh, what they're doing is they're basically selling stock. Now, this is not good for shareholders, okay? So you got to look at from from a standpoint of the cruise lines and the travel advisors, it's good. I feel they feel like they have enough capital on hand to operate the, as we are presently operating through the end of 2022. Yeah. So I, I just feel confident of all the major players and that's our major players being Norwegian Cruise Lines which is Oceana, NCL and Region 7 Seas, Royal Caribbean which is Royal Caribbean Celebrity and Silver Sea and uh, of course Carnival with Carnival Cruise Lines Princess, Holland America, Cunard Seaborn and all those guys so I feel like everybody's in good enough shape uh, as we get more and more people on board I think it's just a, 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 and they're they're counting on not having any revenue through the end of 2022 so Wow. So yeah, hopefully uh, returning that, to profit. That's why, that's, that's, why our, that's why our ships are fully staffed right now. I mean, it's phenomenal when you get the cost of these cruises, uh, the amount of food you have to order, because you have no idea. I mean, we were on the Allure of the Seas, 5,800 passenger capacity. Right. And we had 300 passengers, 300 passengers. I mean, you walked out on the promenade. It was a ghost town. There were tumbleweeds blowing down the promenade. And uh, <laughs> there there are crew members standing around begging you to come in and get a cup of coffee or a drink or something. And uh, so uh, again, I think one other thing I want to cover before we leave it, and that's the mass policy yes. um, for, for most of the cruise line. Well, the cruise lines within the NCL family, the um, Frank Del Rio has been really a proponent of not having masks. So he was the first one to say, okay, we're going to have a hundred percent vaccinated guests. We don't care if we don't have any children, whatever. And because they're a hundred percent vaccinated, we're not going to require masks for the uh, passengers. Most of the other cruise lines, Holland, Princess, Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, uh, Silver Sea are requiring masks when you're in public areas, indoors, not outdoors by the pool. And uh, the crew is masked, but but when you go to dine or go to drink, you can take the mask off. Right. And fortunately, fortunately, you want to make sure you have a beverage package because you'll find yourself drinking a lot more so you don't have to uh, have the mask on. So uh, we were on Silver Sea. Uh, we kept forgetting the mask every time we walked out. We finally, after about four or five days, remembered it each time. Uh, and you don't have to wear it in the cabin, obviously. So the right. mask... 
that that's something people need to be aware of. I think you have to count on you're going to have to wear a mask in public areas indoors. So if that bothers you, you might want to consider waiting. Right. And we don't probably we're probably don't we're not going to expect to see that change anytime soon. I wouldn't think. No, I don't. I don't think. So, so. Uh, by the way, more. it's something interesting on the mass uh, Royal Caribbean because all of their their crew members are masked. What they did was they ran around and took photographs of what they look like without their mask on. So everybody wears a button on their shirt of the picture of themselves without the mask on. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of clever to that, do. That's that's a neat idea. Now, Larry, you mentioned capacity. Is it fact or fiction going into 22? The ships, say, the, the ships are not going to sail at full capacity? No, and I don't see many ships even approaching 50%. Now, that's a fact because of two factors. One, people are still afraid to cruise. Yeah. And two, they're limited to 50% at this point. So that's gradually going to increase up to 60% in January. But again, uh, all I can tell you is right now, they are not even close to 50%. So right on. So yeah. if so, you're if you're into cruising and looking for that well looked after experience, this is the time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, so we're not going to return to normal next year. It looks better better for for 23. We're hoping. Yeah. Yeah. But for next year, I think some things to consider. Uh, Alaska. Uh, you can also count on higher uh, airfares. However, we have noticed that the cruise lines airfare has been very, very good. It seems they must have put some contracts in place before this all got started. So they, uh, we've seen some phenomenal uh, airfare rates, and we're seeing more and more cruise lines, including airfare, as part of the part of their cruise fare. Uh, Viking is doing that. Silver Sea is doing it. So we, we've got a lot of cruise lines. Uh, Oceana has always done that. So yeah. So. Overseas has got um, they've got some phenomenal programs on the yeah. door the door to door door to door all inclusive with private transfers and yeah um, and, and it's amazing and, and one of the great things about that is that if you're more than fifty miles from your uh, airport they'll actually let you just pay a little bit extra to the to the limousine company no I've never seen that done in a company before they're including all the excursions they're including uh, for ninety nine dollars a pre cruise hotel in Vancouver which is probably going to be the Pan Pacific or the Fairmont right there at Canada Place uh, they're uh, including the gratuities one thing to remember about Silver Sea when you get on board they ask you how you want your bar stock you know whatever you want it's there the next the, the that afternoon and uh, it's just incredible what they're offering these days. And again, yeah. with 300 passengers on a 600 passenger ship, it's, uh, I mean, you, you, we walked into the Panorama Lounge observation lounge and there were four bartenders standing there looking at us for the whole hour. We sat there. We were the only two people in the whole place. The, the, uh, the embarkation uh, process has gotten much better. You now have to uh, register ahead of time and you get a, a time to be at the pier they don't let anybody at the pier more than a half an hour before that time. So there are no crowds in the pier. You upload your passport, your vaccine card, your test. Everything's on your phone. They just look at it. Your keys are up in the cabin. You don't have to. And the, the check-in process has become phenomenally easy. The lifeboat drill right now is is an app on your phone that you watch within 24 hours of getting board the ship uh, you watch a video and then you hear an audio of the ship's warning system you take your phone down to your muster station and they give you a sticker for your key card and that's it for the there's no more everybody showing up on the fifth deck at four o'clock in the afternoon closing down the bars and then waiting a half an hour to get an elevator to go back to your cabin because everybody's trying to get the same elevator that's right. all gone Oh, it's the the embarkation process. Oh, you take your picture, so it's on your key card. But when you get to the cabin, I mean, it's just wonderful. It's the, I mean, you're on the ship and in your cabin within eleven or twelve minutes now. So all of all of these innovations that came came about apart in, in part because of COVID are great advances for improving yeah. your cruise. Yeah, and they're not going away because the whole yeah. uh, the whole mission here was to create a touchless. Uh, check-in process so right. that you know you didn't have to sign things you didn't have to touch paper they didn't have to touch paper i mean it, it's it's really well done what they've done and, and again that was royal caribbean who created that system and, and they gave it to all the cruise lines free of charge wow fantastic so is do we have anything else on the go for 22 23 us yeah <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to that. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, well, just to finish off 21, we will be leaving here on the 23rd. We're going to go to Atlanta to, for Christmas with my family, and then we fly to New Orleans. We're going to board the American Queen Steamboat Companies, the the American Duchess, and we're going to do a, a Mississippi River Cruise round trip to New Orleans, and we wow. get off the ship on the 3rd of January, so we'll be on board the ship on New Year's Eve, and uh, this is a very much a jazz-themed cruise, so that's going to be quite a uh, celebration that sounds like a real party to me yeah <laughs> it's going to be great and and again it's 195 passengers i don't expect we're going to have more than 100 passengers on board so um, in march we're we're going to be going out uh, on a 10-day cruise we have 65 passengers signed up for that one already uh, and that'll be on celebrity and then uh we've got some great news from here in port canaveral we have, we have been bugged for the last 18 years that we've been in business for a ship going from Port Canaveral to Bermuda. The, it's one of our favorite ships, the Mariner of the Seas, is going to start in May going uh, from Port Canaveral to May, to Bermuda, and they're going to do like 12 of these sailings. So that's we're really excited about that. And then I guess the cruise we're most looking forward to is in June, we're taking Silver Sea from Vancouver to Seward. And uh, we we're take we're doing a distinctive voyages group on that that cruise. And that, that means that they get a, an exclusive uh, escorted um, excursion that's designed just for folks who book with Travel Leaders Network. So that one's going to be really fun too. We we did that that same cruise last September, and uh, uh, Alaska just continues to fascinate me, especially because there's nobody there. I mean, uh, you really get a sense of what Alaska is like when there's nobody there. Fantastic. Well, Larry, this has been absolutely great information. Thanks, Ken. If uh, our viewers and listeners want to reach out and get hold of you about any one of these wonderful cruises you just mentioned, how, how do we do that? The best is your crawler here with my phone number, 321-242-1331. Oh, the folks in Canada can call us at 866-291-1331. Our 800 number runs, works in Canada. Just cruisingviera.com is our webpage, and you'll see all of our special cruises up there. And there's also buttons there to contact us. And shooting us an email off of that webpage is the best way because we monitor that pretty much 24-7. That cruise on the Mississippi River at New Year's Eve sounds like a really fascinating thing. We're going to have to have you... Would you be willing to come back to regale us with your exploits on the mighty Mississippi? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to uh, try a little experiment this time. I'm going to take my camera with me and my microphone, and we're going to see what do some broadcasts or record some broadcasts, and maybe we'll get those up on the web for you. All right, my friend. Well, this has been great. So until next time, here's a wish for you for safe and happy travels for you and Linda and all of your team. And may the wind always be on your back, and I hope to see you on the Lido deck real soon. Okay, and aloha to you and Deborah. Take care, Larry. Okay, Ken. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Larry Jackson of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. If you'd like to reach out to Larry about one of those fantastic cruises, I'll leave his contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and the ring of the bell, we certainly appreciate it and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.